Rooster Teeth News is brought to you by NatureBox. Snack smarter with French toast granola, sweet blueberry almonds, and more. Get 50% off your first order when you visit naturebox.com slash roosterteeth. Welcome to the new week, guys. I'm Ashley Jenkins, and in exciting watchdogs news, especially after last month's trademark scare, the game is honing in on a release window. In October, just weeks before the game was due to release as a launch title for next-gen consoles, even so far as getting a launch bundle with PlayStation 4, Ubisoft announced they intended to hold on to the game a little longer and move the game's release to a vague spring 2014. In a call with investors today, Ubisoft CEO Yves Guimel revealed that the game will be ready between April and June for Xbox 360, Xbox One, PlayStation 3, PlayStation 4, and PC. The Wii U version, however, will come out sometime later, and Guimel offered no specifics. But at least we know it's still coming. Last month, some GameStop stores began canceling Wii U version pre-orders, though GameStop later said this was a mistake. And even though Watch Dogs Wii U has been delayed, it's not all doom and gloom for Nintendo. A British online retailer has inadvertently revealed a new limited edition 3DS XL to accompany the release of Yoshi's New Island. And even though the visual mock-up accompanying the listing has been revealed as unofficial, the bundle itself is legit and will release in both Europe and North America. The handheld will have a custom design and will come with a copy of the game pre-installed. Yoshi's New Island for 3DS is the follow-up to 1995's SNES Yoshi's Island and the 2006 Yoshi's Island DS. It is being produced by Takashi Tezuka, who worked on both previous Yoshi's Island titles. It will be released on March 14th. The bundle will drop at the same time and will be priced similar to other bundles at $219.99 in the US or £199.99 in the UK. In less rosy news, now that Microsoft has a new CEO and 22-year company veteran Satya Nadella, there's renewed pressure from some investors to shed the company's consumer-facing divisions like Xbox and focus on enterprise, which has always done reliably well for the company. Just to be clear, the pressure is unrelated in any way to the success of Xbox One or its sales versus PS4. It's actually more to do with poor performance in other consumer-facing groups and a concern that these divisions distract Microsoft from its strengths. The online services division, which houses Bing, took a loss of $1.3 billion in 2013, which, believe it or not, is actually an improvement over 2012, and Surface lost $900 million in unsold tablets last year. Even the Windows business has been shrinking and only made $9.5 billion last year, compared to its $12.3 billion earnings in 2011. And the drop is primarily credited to the consumer market, though the consumers in question are more likely to point to Windows 8, which has failed to convince many to upgrade. Prior to stepping up as CEO, Nadella has been running Microsoft's hefty servers and tools division, and so could be seen as sitting on the enterprise side of the fence. However, signs so far point to Nadella preferring to work within the framework established by predecessors Bill Gates and Steve Ballmer, both of whom believe strongly in Microsoft's need to engage consumers. Nadella has asked Gates to step into a more active advisory role, and both Gates and Ballmer retain seats on the board. For now, Xbox isn't going anywhere. In fact, Microsoft Game Studios boss Phil Spencer has just announced two of their first ID at Xbox games for March, a new Worms game, presumably from franchise veterans Team 17 since Microsoft has previously announced their involvement in the indie program, and Nutjitsu from Kathleen's creators Ninja Bee. This is the first Microsoft has spoken about their indie development program since early December, when they announced that they had shipped more than 50 development kits to participating developers and shared a few headlining indie studios like Broken Age's Double Fine, Fruit Ninja creators Half Brick, Hidden Path, the studio behind Defense Grid and Counter-Strike Global Offensive, Super Time Force Devs' Happy Games, and Mighty No. 9's Concept. Next, Twitch has announced that they now have more than 1 million monthly broadcasters and an audience that consumes 13 billion minutes of streaming every month. 13 billion minutes. To put it in perspective, that equates to 24,733 years spent watching streams every month. This follows their announcement last week that Twitch had passed Hulu, Facebook, Valve, and Amazon in peak US internet traffic at least for one week. That week, they came in fourth with 1.8% of total peak internet traffic behind Netflix, Google, and Apple. And finally, in today's news marathon, Flappy Bird's creator Dong Wen has pulled his viral hit from the mobile app stores after blaming the game for ruining his life. On Friday, he said, I can call Flappy Bird a success of mine, but it also ruins my simple life, so now I hate it. 
The next day he said, I'm sorry Flappy Bird users, 22 hours from now I will take Flappy Bird down. I cannot take this anymore. And true to his word, the game has been removed, spawning a bizarre eBay run on phones that still have it installed. The removal isn't related at all to legal issues. The game leans heavily on classic Nintendo-inspired visuals like green pipes and a Flappy Bird that loosely resembles Mario's Cheep Cheeps, though actually, when did create the art himself, and Nintendo hasn't pursued any kind of action against the game. More likely, the developer's success has been soured by a sudden and unexpected place in the spotlight and a deluge of messages from frustrated players whom he frequently responded to recommending they take breaks. And it looks like he's decided to follow his own advice. And that's it for today, I hope. If you haven't bought an Xbox One yet, will Microsoft's rollout of indie games make the console worth your money, or will you wait for more major franchises to make an appearance? Let us know in the comments. Then check RoosterTeeth.com later this week for a new episode of The Patch to find out what we think.